You can access the entire episode now on our website, ForbiddenKnowledge.news, Rockfin, Rumble, and all podcast platforms. You were telling me earlier that you have ultimately also had experiences with the darker side of paranormal, which led you to have an understanding and help others with the issues caused by the darker sides of this, right? Yes. And this comes back to another one of my rules, is that we are powerfully creative people. Our humanity is amazingly powerful. And this is where sometimes, well, people will start to disagree with me because what we see in the movies, what we see on the TV shows, and what we hear in the churches gets repeated so often and so much that people tend to take these things to be true, that that's the way things really are. Mm. And in my years, I'm like 52 years, I'm turning 52 this year. In all of my years of working with a paranormal, having direct connection with it, working with people and seeing some big nasty kind of things out there, I've never yet encountered what people would call a demon, like in classical demonology. They've always been manifestations of our own consciousness. We created these things. We created Mm. these beings. And that leads to another one of my rules, is you are in control of your energetic environment. And when you understand how you can control that energetic environment, how you can shift the energies around you, you realize that you now have control over these quote unquote demonic entities, which really aren't. Like, for example, if somebody is having a house where things might be flying across the room, objects are levitating, there might be a bad smell, cold spots, you know, all the typical stuff that we're talking about. I'll go into that home, I'll work with a family and I'll sit there and I'm like, there's not a big nasty here. There's not a big problem here. I'm like scanning the house. I'm using my abilities and I'm like, there's not much here. I'm like, okay, sure. There's a thought form here, thought form there, a couple bottom beaters. Those are normal. We'll just do an energy hygiene. We'll just do a clearing. They're gone. But then I start seeing the interplay of people in the house and I'll start noticing the energy start to shift. And I'm like, going, got it. Or they'll start describing certain events that happen. I'm like, got it. Now I know what's going on. It's a poltergeist effect. It's where somebody in the house has paranormal abilities they've got some intense emotions going on under the surface but they're not allowed to express those emotions or they're not allowed to let them out and so telekinetic activity and energetic activity happen around the house usually focused on one person because that's usually the, the strict disciplinarian parent and it's one of the children that are causing the poltergeist effect not on purpose they're not being bad they're just needing to express their emotions they got an emotional energy that needs to get out and they don't have a safe way of expressing their emotions. And so those, that emotional energy will find a way to release itself and it comes across as poltergeist activity. But now mom and dad are reaching out for help. They call out to a deliverance minister. They go to their church and they've been totally convinced that now there's a demon possessing their house and that there's a big nasty and that they have to do all of these rituals, they have to do all of these things by the church, their fear level is amped to the extreme because now they have to go home and live with a demon in their house. That messes with their (laughs) energetic environment even more. That scares the hell out of those kids even more. And they're wondering why the problems got worse after they went to the church. I'm like, (laughs) because you're perpetuating, you're propagating the problem through your fear and misunderstanding. So when I come into it and I work with it, We get the kids someplace where they can safely express their emotions. We clear the energy in the house, sure, but we get a better understanding. We talk to the kids, we get the kids energy released and get the kids in a safe way to release that energy. And the poltergeist quote unquote demonic activity goes away. So yeah, I've seen some of the darker sides, some of the scarier stuff, but it's not like what we've been told. It's what we are creating, we're generating. And I don't want to blame victim here. It's not blaming the victim. I'm not saying, well, you did this to yourself. It's not that. It's <laughs> yeah. going, no, 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 wait. If you created this, you can make a shift and create the opposite. Since you created this, you made this happen, it's proof that you have that ability. You have those paranormal abilities. And now you can take charge of your home, your energy, shift this around and make everything a much safer, better place because you already have done it before. Let's just do it again with some training so that it now works in a much more positive way for you. 
Do you find that happening more common with younger children where they are unknowingly expressing these abilities? Because probably the adults have been shut off and we've all our abilities have been dulled from everything we're surrounded with since the time we're born that children have are this better connection, right? Absolutely. Kids have connections. Kids are open, awake, and aware. They've got abilities. Everybody has different abilities, you know, just like some kids are great at singing, some kids are great at drawing, some kids are great at math, and you want to foster those abilities. We all have paranormal abilities. Some are better at talking, some are better at feeling, some are better at seeing. And if you recognize that your kids have these abilities, validate it. Check in with them, say, yeah, that's cool, what are you seeing? And don't be scared, because if you're scared, the kids are going to get scared. And then that's going to create an energetic problem. But what tends to go on is mom and dad get scared because they've seen the TV shows, they've seen the movies, they don't have any other experience other than that. And now the kids are like going, but yeah, I see this old lady walking through the house and mom and dad are like, oh my God, no. But instead they're just like, stop it. I don't want to hear it. Just go to your room. Stop telling stories. And they go to school and they tell the kids, hey, there's like this lady walking through the house that I can see, see through. And they start laughing at the kid. The teacher's like, okay, that's enough of your games right down to do your work. Yeah. So over and over, this child's experience is being completely invalidated. They might even be punished because they're using their abilities and they're getting no connection with anybody else in their life. So they go, okay, I need to fit in. I need to be normal. I need to keep myself safe. So they turn off their abilities. They push it down. They repress it. It's gone. It's over. They're just a normal functioning member of society until they get older. And then they start remembering, oh yeah. Or they start experiencing like, ah, oh, yeah, what's this? What's that? What's that? Because mm. this will happen when people reach, you know, late twenties, thirties into their forties, when life becomes stable, when they've got a good financial income, they've got a home, they've got a family, they're not struggling anymore. You know, they basically have all of the needs met of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and they can start working on self-actualization. Their abilities start to kick back on. It's like their higher beings, their higher self kicks in and says, hey, you ready for this? And they're now going, why am I seeing this? Why am I experiencing this? What's happening? How, how do I deal with it? And that's where they come to me going, okay, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that. My kids are reporting this, what do I do? And I'm like, great, let's get you the training to use your abilities because what you're experiencing is completely normal. You just had it turned off for all of your life because you had to fit in. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the most unfortunate things that I can look at now and say that even in my own childhood that we were just deprived of and that we were pushed to to close off these abilities we have just because society doesn't accept this stuff anymore and that's really sad to me. Now, I want to go back to something very interesting you said a few minutes ago whenever you had gone into these homes and you are scanning them and you said you see a thought form here or thought form there and like these egregoric energies and I've explored this a lot with different researchers, the possibility that what we're experiencing and people are calling demonic activity or poltergeist could just be these that this energetic thought form that we created because we gave it so much power and energy, right? Absolutely. To really relate that and bring that forward, how that works, is something I call a compound haunting. It's where there might be literally a spirit in the house, actually a spirit there, but they're misinterpret the humans, the living people are misinterpreting what's going on. So they're creating negative fear energy around them, which generates a thought form that thought form feeds off of their negative fear energy, starts reproducing it in the house. And then maybe the stories start to perpetuate and perpetuate. And a group of people start believing like the story. They're like saying, oh yeah, in that house there was a murder and that makes it a portal to hell and blah, blah, blah. And now we're creating an egregore, a collective created egregore to live in that house. So the story that I can relate that to you with is my mom's OBGYN when she was pregnant with me, was Dr. Robert Bradley. He's the inventor of the Bradley method of natural childbirth. And he, the movie, The Changeling, starring George C. Scott, was partially yeah. based on his story.